Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about bundling services, why it makes sense, why you should do it, why you should probably start implementing if you're not. And today, I got a pretty awesome guest, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. We've been doing this now for almost six years, 300 weeks straight. You got tons of content to catch up on. It's anywhere podcasts are found. And of course, also on YouTube, if you want to play it in the background, I got more of a face for radio, so that's on you. But if you're not new and you've watched uh, the episodes, you've listened to the episodes and you've become a cool kid, meaning you've purchased your supplies through me, eh? shameless plug. Well, it is because of you that I get to live the lavish lifestyles of blank t-shirts and hair gel. And I thank you for it. So if you haven't yet, let me be your rep, please do. My number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. So call me, text me, whatever. I would love to be your rep. And of course, if you've seen the stickers, you've seen everything else, go to awcmag.com and get your subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Of course, you're a nerd for window cleaning. That's why you're here watching or listening to a podcast about it. Why not go and get the magazine too? So do the whole trifecta. Go and get that. It comes to your door every single month with stickers and everything else. It's amazing. So go check that out. But today, I do have one of my favorite people in all of the world joining me, Mr. Kurt Kempton from Responsibit himself. What's up, man? Hey, how are you today? <laughs> Sorry, I got the camera over there. How you doing, Josh? I am good, man. I am good. I am uh, so excited to talk to you. Um, I have not done an episode with you in probably three years. It's been a really long time, so it's really awesome. Uh, but if anybody doesn't know who you are, A, they're living under a rock, but if they don't know who you are, tell us who you are. Give us a quick lesson on who you were, what you've done in your life, and what got you here. Well, that's an open-ended question. I <laughs> I started uh, my window cleaning journey just buying a, a trailer and starting up from scratch. Didn't know what the heck I was doing. Um, built a business up. And in five years from the time I started it to the time I sold it, um, in that part of the journey, I sort of found out that I, I was a chicken when it came to selling. And I had no idea how to quote a job. And I made a bunch of stuff up, asked a lot of questions, found out from other people how to do good salesmanship. Turns out it's more of a system than it is an actual like personality, I think. And um, so I started building software for my own cleaning company. And originally uh, it was not very customizable at all. But then my friends started asking me for ways they could implement it in their business and Responsibit was born. Um, so I ran Responsibit in my own window cleaning company for two years, it overlapped. And it was, it was just too difficult to, for me. I, I'm not like uh, a Richard Branson or an Elon Musk that can run like 15 <laughs> different companies. So um, I sold my window cleaning company, which did become quite successful, but um, I've, I've been doing software ever since. And, you know, obviously Responsibit's come a long way from those early days, but um you know, the the same principles have always applies that basically it's a sales system for a company to use to make sure you're giving accurate um, value driven quotes that'll help you to close higher, you know, more jobs at higher average ticket prices with less effort. And um, we do it in lots of different ways, but uh, you know, we can talk more about that later on. Yeah. You know, uh, you still, I think, may hold the record for the most consecutive wins at the IWCA show for branding. I still remember, uh, like, I still remember young Kurtz walking around with all of your stuff. I'm like, dude, this guy is so much farther than anything I've ever done. I felt like a peon when you were just winning all these super awesome things. So your branding was on point. Thanks, man. Well, I, I'll admit that it was a crutch because I, I told us that earlier. I, I'm a real wimp when it comes to selling. I, I grew up with a really bad taste in my mouth about what salespeople were. And yeah. I just found that the less selling I did and the more marketing I did, I just felt like that was somehow more legit. Yeah. Uh, I was wrong about it. But at the end of the day, it actually did win me some pretty cool awards and it made my company a lot easier to sell. Yeah. Um, but but I do think that people who have the God-given gift of being great salespeople, um, you know, I hope they know what they have. 
Yeah. Well, it's it's the whole introverted extroverted thing too. Sales is just explaining what you have and telling somebody else the same thoughts you have about why it's the best choice. That's sales. Yeah. There's always shady people in every industry, but uh, you think car salesman with a toothpick and a greasy hair <laughs> trying to trick you, you know? But yeah, I totally get <laughs> that. True. Yeah, it's true. It's and true. you started software like that's a pretty. I don't want to say random, but a pretty awesome thing to kind of. Most people aren't like, well, I'll just. I'll start a software company real quick and and do that. Like, has that journey for that side of things been uh, uh, a different than you thought? Uh, you're in other industries now. You've seen the other world. Or your blinders for window cleaning are off. Uh, how's that all been? Well, definitely window clean. It's funny window cleaning. I just fell into because that's where I was at. And you're right. I've gotten into other industries and I had no business starting a software company. I learned some very painful lessons along the way. Um, but I have surrounded myself with much smarter, much more capable people. And it's helped a lot. Um, but as I've gone to carpet cleaning industry and the maid service industry and the, you know, obviously the window cleaners often be, are pressure washers, but, um, but there's like, the HVAC side of things and the plumbers and um, there's just so many different industries. Air duct cleaning is another big one. I have found that there is no, no industry out there like the window cleaning industry. And I actually, it, it's fascinating because lowest barrier to entry, you would think that all the scrubs and all the people who don't know what they're doing would, would find their way into this low barrier to entry, which is by the way, I, I was a young married man, uh, I was like 21 years old, married. Um, I started my company. We had two kids with my wife, very young married couple. Why do you think I started my window cleaning company? Very <laughs> 50 low bucks. Rate. You got uh, all the equipment you needed. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like the last $50, right? So like, yeah. um, so you would think that, that the industry would draw sort of the worst of the worst. I mean, if you're just doing it mathematically on paper. Yeah. But actually, actually, it turns out to be the exact opposite. The community in the window cleaning industry, and I would even say the level of professionalism and, and aspirations um, tend to be the highest. The people who fall into success accidentally doing all the wrong things and, um, you know, like you get the carpet cleaner that, you know, every once in a while a blind squirrel find its nut kind of thing. Like, yeah. I heart, and, and, and I don't talk bad about them because like, Obviously, they are my customers and they there are a lot of really savvy people out there. Yeah. I'll just say that per capita, the window cleaning world, like conventions before there were other conventions. Yeah. Um, window cleaning was ahead of the curve. Um, Facebook groups, for, well, not even Facebook, forums, forums for people who didn't beat each other up and actually helped each other. WCR paved that path. If you remember Gary Maurer. Yeah. Who, I actually remember him being really rough on people, but there was a true sense of helpfulness in his old email threat. It was an email yeah. group. Yeah. That's um, OG right just, there. Yeah, yeah. It, he is. And, yeah. and I just don't think that other industries now, granted, I, I wasn't in those industries at those specific times, but let's put it this way. When I was a window cleaner, being a multi-million dollar or even just a seven figure a year revenue company was quite rare. Yeah. I've, I've looked in a lot of industries and, you know, HVAC, they're selling like $5,000 jobs all day, every day, or more, you know, yeah. five to $20,000 jobs all day, every day. Um, and a lot of it goes into the materials and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, there's a lot of million dollar HVAC companies out there, but the change I have seen in the window cleaning world of people helping each other up to become million dollar companies, it's happening every, like every day I'm hearing about someone who just hit the million dollar mark, hit the million dollar mark where it was not like that back in the very early, early days. Yeah. And I feel like the savviness, I'm not hearing about it in the carpet cleaning world. I'm not hearing about it in the maid service world. Um, you know, Debbie Sardone sort of has a special little thing going to help people become millionaires in the maid world. But all I'm saying is I've been blathering on. I just, I come back to the window cleaning world. Sure, it's my roots, but there is something magical in the one window cleaning world compared to the other industries. Yeah, I would agree. I would absolutely agree. It's it's uh, it's interesting. We have blinders. This is all we see. But it's very interesting when you get out of that and you look at other industries. So, yeah. But jumping into bundles, kind of that's what we really wanted to talk about, too, is this bundles thing, because yeah. um, 
anybody who's watched or listened to pod, this podcast has heard the whole threes. That whole um, kind of threes was the original bundle type. That was the, the selling power of doing that is absolutely amazing. And most people still aren't doing it. They go, oh, this is what you want. Here's the price. And they don't really understand the buying triggers of bundles. Tell us a little bit about just the simple why a bundle works and why people kind of why people decide to spend more money because of it. I think the, the most important thing to understand is why the other way doesn't work because it'll help you understand more how bundles work. So I call it the ultimatum. If you go to someone and you say, that'll be $450, yes or no. Well, at that point, the options aren't enough and people typically don't feel that they're empowered enough to have enough information to make a decision. And so no is a much more attractive sound to them in the buying psychology then yes yeah so so why does bundling work why do packages work they work because it informs without overwhelm and that's the key of sort of what we're talking about today is how do you help a customer to feel comfortable that they have enough information without feeling like they'll never get enough information yeah yeah buyers now, buyers and decision I, is is really a big thing that that bundle thing you're talking about that's when somebody says um, this is what I want. You tell them what they want. And in the back of the brain, they're like, well, I don't know. Is this the right price? Like what else is there? Should I be missing something? Should I be doing something like giving them the options takes away that buyer's indecision? Yeah. And, and, and actually that's the most important part is if you, have you ever read the book by Donald Miller called Donald Miller called building a story brand? I have not. Okay. It's a, it's an awesome book. Um, business book. I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, there's lots of principles in the book about um, sort of helping your customer to find themselves as the hero in your in your brand. Yeah, that's not the part I want to hone in on. But there's a part of the book that talks about the idea of people trying to be too cute with their customers, and we get too cute for lots of different reasons. So I'll give you a couple examples. Um, one thing that we do is we name our company something that doesn't say what we do, and then you get to the website. And it's not, you're not sure if that's what they do. So yeah. for example, um, then your your company is a carpet cleaning company, but you don't want to be roped into all the carpet cleaning companies. So you name your company um, Bob's Interior Services. So Bob does interior services. Okay, great. I get to the website and it goes, make the inside of your home sparkle. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's carpet cleaning, maybe it's not. But people try to make decisions really quick. And so what happens is, is it's just much easier to hit the back button and go to the next one. Yeah. Now, one thing that can really help you is if you called it Bob's Carpet Cleaning, that'll that'll be a, a really nice sign for someone who's looking for buying signals to solve a particular problem. Now, yeah. some of you might be saying, well, we do a lot of interior things, so we can't name our company um, Bob's Carpet Cleaning. It needs to be Bob's Interior Services. I'm not, I'm not debating that one bit. But that subtitle that uh, picture, whatever it is that's going to start the buying signals is we get super, super clear. Donald Miller would say, this is how far you go. We clean carpets. Yeah. Like that's it. Just we're no the question. Best. Yeah. yeah. We're, a, we're a carpet cleaning company like no other or, okay, but Kurt, we do lots of things. We clean carpets and we, um, polished tile and um we 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 stain grout we we uh seal grout okay cool so bob's interior services that's got to be the name of your company you're not going to like change that every day but that subtitle could be we clean carpets and make tiles shine you know like yeah just it, it's like oh but kurt that's not cute and that's kind of my point is that like when a customer in today's day and age is trying to make a decision we want to do, again, this is a Donald Miller Millerism. He says, we want to hand them as few bowling balls as they possibly need. Now, bowling yeah. ball is a piece of information. So we say, bowling ball one, here's what we do. Bowling ball two, here's how we can solve it. Bowling ball three, here's another way we can solve it. And they're like, great, I can hold three bowling balls. This is great. But you hand them that fourth bowling ball. And like, at some point, the information, it's just too much information. Yeah. And it's just too much. And they, It gives and them more questions than answers at that point. Yeah. So we use deionized water to, to 
clean your windows with hogs hair brushes with high modulus carbon fiber poles using a five stage RODI uh, anti scaling system that's got um, sediment filters that come right from your yeah. right from your water source and and like the customers like Whoa, what are you yeah. talking about are my windows going to be clean that's my my actual question as a customer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so so that's that's actually what what we refer to as slathering each bowling ball in vaseline when we start using our jargon and stuff like that so to get the bundles why do bundles work well the first thing is is that customers coming to you with a solution are coming from a few different places but all of them are from a place of confusion when they come to you so i'll give you an example of that so maybe they've had their windows cleaned in the past that means they're probably a really optimal customer because they are the type of people who have clean windows yeah so they come to you from an old company and the whole world of window cleaning is shrouded in this old company. So the way that you're going to show up, how timely you're going to be, what you're going to do while you're there, how you're going to bill them, the prices you should charge. All of that means that when you talk to them, you are working with a baseline that you have no idea where that is. Yeah. Um, maybe they've never had their windows cleaned. Maybe they just moved into a brand new house in a brand new community and they don't know anything about it. They just want to make this thing look nice. Well, that's a totally different baseline you're working off of. Maybe there's somebody who saw a sign on the side that says all, all windows cleaned inside and out, $99. There's a sign right there at the yeah. stoplight off the freeway entry and exit. And they have a whole other baseline that you're working with. So bundles is a way for you to be able to help them to understand what it is that they actually want from your company and what to expect value wise. Yeah. It's also a way to give someone one bowling ball while actually handing them like 10. Right. Because you're talking about a solution. You're talking about a value proposition. Yeah. And so you could say, you could say, yeah, we, we clean windows, but we have, we have bundle A, B and C. Typically the person who gets bundle A is the person who wants everything done. Like they don't care no matter what the price, they want everything to look great. Yeah. This is going to include house washing and gutter cleaning and gutter whitening and window cleaning and screen sealing. And, you know, you, so I, I've got like 10 services going on here, right? Like I'm just like, boom, 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 boom. But I'm just saying, this is what someone who really wants everything to look great. Bundle B is more of like what we offer to people who are just looking for sort of like the biggest bang for the buck. And frankly, it's, it's my highest recommended option yeah. it's going to cost you about 500 less but you're still going to get seven of the eight of the ten services you'll get your windows cleaned your gutters will be cleaned out um we'll do a, a house wash and you know maybe your your driveway and your walkways will not necessarily get hit but you know like so you go down and you just quickly help people understand what's going to happen well in the process you're selling 10 7 or 3 of your services and all the while you've helped reset and reorient the customer to what an experience is like doing business with you, what they will get, what they won't get, what they should expect, what they shouldn't expect, what they, um, you know, how they should expect the work to go down. All of these things are being answered for them in very manageable, logical ways of people to buy without ever hitting that overwhelm. Yeah. And you know, the, the interesting thing is nobody's ever wrong when they make their own decision, right? If you decide something, you're like, yeah, that's it. Because you proven yourself. Well, instead of saying, hey, this is what we do. Do you want it? Then you've made the, that they're making the yes or no, but you've made the decision by putting it into three options, whatever they choose is right. Now they have the decision. Like, I don't want to spend $5,000 on that one package, but I'll get this other package because it's not the cheapest. And uh, I like what it comes with. I don't really need those things, but it, now it all of a sudden puts the entire decision back in their plate and they're right. They're always right. You know, you just, you reminded me of something that's really important too in this is that as they're making that decision and they're having that experience, you know, if they go get three quotes from three different companies, you're asking the customer to try to figure out what the difference is between all the prices that they're quoted. Because, yeah. you know, you know, the guy who's not really focused on being profitable, he's in that startup mode. We've all been there, right? Like, I'll do anything for anything. Like, yeah. give me five dollars, you know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, maybe not five, but you know what I mean? And yeah. um, and they've got to figure out like, well, what's the difference between this guy and you where when you present those bundles to a customer or those packages that you've built and curated for them not only does everything fit together properly to give them an actual experience right like yeah. like all of our house washes come with a window cleaning you know why 
because when we're done washing your house, it's all they're always going to have spotted windows and they're going to have clean windows as well. Yeah. So not only have you curated in a way where it's like, oh, it makes sense how they put these things together. Um, but they're also there's another added benefit. And that is, is that as the customer is deciding what they want to do in those curated bundles, they're doing it from somebody who already has the unshoppable characteristic that means that they don't need to go and compare you to anything else. So yep. for example, um, Jersey, um, you actually had, I, I don't know what you did with this company, but Southwash, I really like the name of South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Southwash, you had a uh, beautiful branding. You had, uh, it just came out of the mouth. I loved the way it came out of the mouth. It, yeah. it, it reminded me of mouthwash, which is really clean. And, um, and so you could come in with just your clean branding and explanation of your experience and a bunch of other stuff. You set this baseline of unshoppability. And then by by asking people which bundle they wanted to choose, what you do is, is you, may, you make it so that they go, boy, I sure would hate to go back to the drawing board and have to find out like, am I going to find this one has enough experience? Am I going to have someone who has the equipment yeah. and the know-how and the knowledge and the insurance and the, you know, blah, 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 blah all the things that you set baseline? Um, because the guy with the $99 sign even though it's very appealing, um, the people in our market that we serve, they know that when someone's charging 99 and someone else is charging 1500 for package A, um, they understand they're you get not something the same. Different. Yeah. There yeah. is something different. And when you go and set that baseline, all of a sudden it's like, you know what? At this baseline, these are the three options I have. Yeah. And I don't want to change that. Yeah. It's price versus value. Value Dick, value justifies price. So if you can explain the value because you're getting all of this, you're getting these items, this is why the price is what it is. The next guy that comes over and goes, oh, we do it for this. Well, you didn't You didn't tell me your value. Like you instantly aren't selling against somebody else. You're only selling against the three options that you have. But you said something no. interesting before that I, I want to dive into too. You said that you're able to increase your average ticket because of bundles. Why is oh, that? Yeah. Well, it's actually... You don't even have to increase it. Your customer will do it for you. It's so because cool. they're right. They made the decision. Um, yeah, yeah. So what happens is, is when you when you first go to someone, like I said, remember you have the three different people that I described plus a hundred other kinds uh, that have their own reality in their mind when you come. Um, those people who got a coupon twenty years ago in the mail that saw that window cleaning was twenty dollars, and also the people who uh, believe that. You know, the sign on the side of the road was probably about the price that you're going to quote. Um, when you price it out to them and just your basic window cleaning package is $350, they're not buying from you. Yeah. They're not buying from you because the it doesn't match the reality. So if you take bundles and you say, we have package A that's $1,500, you think they're going to buy that? Probably not. They're looking <laughs> for the really low dollar now. Um, but it does reset their brain. Right. So the first is the anchoring effect. And the anchoring effect says, whoa, 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 this is not even the same planet. What am I, what am I to learn here that I didn't understand previously? Yeah. Again, their, their brain is probably talking them out of the highest price. But when we get down to the $850 package, and then we get down to the $250 package, what happens is, is the customer's resetting now from 1500 to 800 and then they reset again from 800 to 250 as opposed to $99 to 250 right? Yeah. That that anchor that they started with, it, it causes a lot of trouble with the ultimatum. Now, here's the other thing. Let's say the person calls and they're like resetting from that 1500 and they get to the 800 and the 800 sounds like, gosh, this is actually, I wasn't thinking about my gutters. I wasn't thinking about getting my roof cleaned. I wasn't thinking about getting my... Um, flat work done, but gosh, this 800 package still leaves me wanting more. Like it's, if I don't get my roof done, I'm going to end up having to put a whole new roof on this house sooner than I would have liked to have. I have the money in the account right now. I could save my roof and make it last a lot longer. I know I was just calling for window cleaning, but gosh, I'd be crazy not to, you can see how this mentality works, right? Yeah. Like, and it's not the 1500. It. I mean, it's really, that's too much, but 800 just doesn't seem like a lot. That's half the price of the other one. It creates but, that. But even then, after they, they start selling themselves on the 800. 
They suck on those 800 and yes, they might bite on the 800 or they might bite on the 250. But here's, here's what happens is they start buying, biting on the 800 and now that their world is opened up, that roof cleaning, the $1,500 package starts sounding like I'd be crazy not to do it. Just that's where, that, that's where like the like, so it'll allow the customer to where they would normally have that, that knee jerk reaction, the psychology of it going, you're, you're a ripoff artist. This should be $99. Get out of here. That knee jerk reaction gets stopped by anchoring to a high price. And when you start moving back down, you'll actually find that not only will you sell them higher stuff in the lower packages, but they actually will upsell themselves to the higher package because now they're able to absorb the value exchange. Yeah. yeah. That that's the crazy thing is, is the subliminal side of buying triggers and justification and people wrapping their, their brain around value. All that comes into play when you start doing bundles. If you're not doing bundles, you, you're kind of giving yourself that that loop. Now, on a side note, I have to talk about response bid. Uh, anybody who's watched, I know I talk about it a lot. There's actually a link in this video on YouTube for it to sign up right now. But tell me about response bid real quick. I know we're kind of wrapping up, but tell me what response bid does in its simplest form and why those bundles in response bid end up working. Yeah. So we're a sales funnel that clicks into your CRM. So if you use like customer factor or jobber or market or house call pro, um, any number of other ones that we have, service monsters, one that we just upgraded our connection to. So you put us on top of that for your sales process. Um, Responsive has modules that'll allow you to install it on your website. You can use it out in the field in person. You can use it over the phone. It's basically your intake form that allows you to collect as much information as you want from the customer to begin the packaging process and the bundling yeah. process. So you go in and teach it your pricing. You go in how you want to do it. You figure out what you want to allow through each of those three channels online, over the phone or in person. And then it will do all of the math to start building your proposals for you. You can tweak them. You can add videos to them. You can do all sorts of stuff. To and like we could sort of literally talk for four hours about all the things responsive it does. It does so, I, I remember when it was originally started, it was awesome. And there's a thousand things that it can do now from follow-ups yeah. to like a billion. Yeah. Things. So, so the idea of responsive is to get your customer to move from research mode to decision mode. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, if you, if you use responsive bid, you will basically systematize your best selling system to happen every single time. Yeah. And every employee can do it because you can do it remotely. Every time you go to a place, you can go ahead and even if the neighbor comes up and says, Hey, I'm looking for a quote, instead of going, sure, the owner will talk to you. You just literally can pull out your phone, put everything in the information sense, the office, it's saved, the follow-ups are set up, all of that set up. You have a price right there and all the person has to go, cool. What is, what works? Like it, it basically systemizes, which I talk about systems all the time. It systemizes bidding, closing, follow-ups, leads. It takes all that information, saves it. I can't tell you how many people I sold it three in the morning because some lady woke up out of a, a panic sweat dream about how the windows are dirty and her mother-in-law isn't coming. Like so many times that is there when people are ready. It's the the eBay, Amazon world, and it just works so stinking well. So if you guys, by the way, haven't checked it out yet, uh, this sounds so, so so spammy, I know, but the link's down below. You can literally click it. It'll bring you right there. Just, just take a look at it. You guys make it so easy too to kind of get into it because there's onboarding, there's setup, and there's all of that. That can be taken care of. So even though you have yep. a thousand things that it does, you can make it super, super simple. And it's like as tailorable to specifically your company as any product I've ever used. So anyone who signs up with responsibility gets a success coach who will take you through the six steps of sign up of setup and actually be there every step of the way, sharing your screen or doing it for you while you watch. So you don't have to like worry about all the things it does. Nice. You just tell them what you want it to do and then they can give you insights as they build it for you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So anyway, I appreciate Kurt. We could uh, probably talk for another hour. I know that. Um, but uh, if you guys don't know too, I would still love to be your rep. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and let me place orders for you. My number directs 862-312-2026. It's a cell phone. Call me, text me, whatever. Go get the subscription to AWC Magazine. It's awcmag.com. And of course, check out the link here in the YouTube video for Responsive. Literally one of my favorite people. I just want to say thank you for uh, taking some time and uh, recording with me. I hope we do this again very, very soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Jersey. Definitely, man. Well, have a great one, and we will talk to you again next week. Go get responsive, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.